everyone. In this video, I'm going to look at a practice problem where I have to solve for the level of production and profit, and it will be a discrete case. So these types of questions are really common when you're being introduced to economics and the economic way of thinking about decision making. So here's our question here. We have Toby who owns a swimming pool business in Queensland. Toby's total cost of producing swimming pools for various levels of production is given in this table here. So for instance, if Toby makes no swimming pools, his total cost will be 80. If Toby makes one swimming pool, his total cost will be 180. If he made, we can pick one more, say four swimming pools, his total cost will be 540. In the question we're asked, if the market price of swimming pools is $150 and Toby is a price taker, how many swimming pools should Toby produce and what is Toby's profit? So the approach we need to use here is sometimes referred to as marginal analysis. And the idea is that in economics, we model or conceive of economic actors as making decisions at the margin. And in particular, for every marginal or additional action, we only go through with that if the marginal benefit associated with that action is greater than or equal to the marginal cost associated with that action. In terms of firms, so Toby here is a producer, he's a firm owner, the benefit of selling one more unit is the additional revenue that the firm gets. So this rule is restated in that we will go ahead with producing one more unit if the marginal revenue is greater than or equal to the marginal cost. So that's essentially what we need to do here. We need to find for each level of production, the marginal revenue and the marginal cost. So I'm going to make two new columns here. The first thing I'm going to do is find our marginal cost. So marginal cost is pretty easy to find. The formula for marginal cost is that we just take the change in the total cost and divide by the change in quantity. So it's the additional cost that's incurred from making one more unit. It's worth noting that in the example here, in this practice problem, the quantity change is always just going to be equal to one. So we're essentially just taking the difference in the total cost as we're increasing our level of production. But what I'll do is I'll show you all the working for you guys uh, so you can see exactly how the formula relates to um, the figure that you get at the end. So when quantity is equal to zero, my marginal cost is actually not defined. So I'm just going to put a dash here like that. As we're going from zero to one units of production, the change in total cost, well, that's 180 minus 80 is equal to 100. My change in quantity is, well, we went from zero to one. So one minus zero, right? So it's equal to one. So my marginal cost is 100 over one is equal to 100. As we go to produce that second quantity, our change in total cost would be, well, 290 minus 180, which is 110. And our change in quantity will be one. We can just find that as two minus one. So marginal cost ends up to be 110 over one, which is equal to 110. Moving on to the third swimming pool, our change in total cost would be 410 minus 290, which is 120, and the change in quantity is equal to one, so that's three minus two. So marginal cost is equal to 120. If we made that fourth swimming pool, the change in total cost would be 130, that's 540 minus 410, and the change in quantity is one. So marginal cost ends up to be 130. If we went and did that fifth unit, the marginal cost would actually be 160 because our total cost changes from 540 to 700 and the difference between them is 160. The change in quantity is still one though, it's five minus four, so marginal cost is 160. Lastly, if we made that sixth, sixth swimming pool, the marginal cost would be 880 minus 700, so that's 180, and the change in quantity is again one. So our marginal cost is 180 over one, which is 180. So that's the marginal cost for each possible level of production. So we can find our marginal revenue now. And all we need for that is the change in the total revenue divided by the change in the quantity. 
Now our marginal revenue in this case is actually just equal to the price, which is equal to 150. So we can tell this if we have a look at the question and we see that the question tells us that the market price for swimming pools is 150 and that Toby is a price taker. And this means that Toby cannot choose his own price. So every time he sells a pool, it will have to be for $150. So each time he produces one more unit and sells it, his marginal revenue then, the additional revenue that he gets from producing and selling one more unit is 152. So I can fill in my column here for every additional swimming pool that we make, the marginal revenue for that swimming pool will be 150. So if you recall, the decision rule was that Toby would go ahead and make a swimming pool, make a marginal or additional swimming pool if the marginal revenue associated with that level of production was greater than or equal to the marginal cost. So now what we're going to do is to just check our marginal revenue against our marginal cost for each level of production. So for the first unit, for instance, our marginal revenue is equal to 150 and our marginal cost is equal to 100. So our marginal revenue is greater than our marginal cost. That meets our condition, so that's great, we'll do that. That's true for the second unit as well. In that case, the marginal revenue 150 is still greater than our marginal cost, which is only 110. So we're definitely gonna do that. And that's true for the third unit as well. In that case, our marginal revenue is 150 and that's greater than the marginal cost of 120. So that ticks our box, that's, that meets the condition. And that's also true for the fourth unit. The marginal revenue is 150 and the marginal cost is 130. It's not true for this fifth unit. In this fifth unit, the marginal revenue is 150 and that's less than the cost or the marginal cost of that level of production, which is 160. So our condition does not hold, the marginal revenue is not greater than or equal to our marginal cost. And that's true for that sixth unit as well. You can check 180 is, is greater than 150. So it follows from uh, checking all of these levels of production that Toby's optimal amount of production is to produce four units. And at this level of production, he's exhausting all of the possible levels of production where our marginal revenue is greater than our marginal cost or equal to, and he's never producing where the marginal cost is higher than the marginal revenue. So now that we know how much Toby will produce, we can go ahead and find the profit. Now my profit is just going to be all the revenue that Toby gets minus the total cost of production. Now total revenue we can find by just getting the price that we're selling at multiplying by how much we're selling. So that's P times Q. And our total cost we can actually just read straight off the table. So the price is 150 and the quantity is four and the total cost is 540. 150 times four is equal to 600 and the difference between 600 and 540 is 60. So that's the profit. And that's it. I hope that this helps with your problem at home and your understanding, especially around how, um, or an introduction into how economists think about how uh, agents make decisions. So if it did, please like and subscribe, but most of all, just have a lovely day or night.